Assalamualaikum guys and welcome back to another video. It's Ibrahim Muslim and today I'm back with a video on macOS Monterra. So macOS Monterra is the latest update after the macOS Montre and we are using a public beta 2 in this laptop. macOS Monterra is the biggest update on macOS since the launch of M chipset processors. Why is the biggest update? Because it has obsoleted a lot of older iMacs and MacBooks and Mac Pros. So it has even obsoleted the Mac Pro 2013 and it has obsoleted almost four years of Mac Minis and Mac Pros and even the MacBook Air which came out in 2015 and the original MacBook Pro with the touch bar which came out in 2016 it's obsoleted as well you won't get update on that so there's still hope with third party patches but from Apple officially we have seen that they have discontinued this so the fear of Intel's being obsolete very quick is coming out because Apple is trying to give their own M chipsets a boost. So I was just thinking that Mac Pro 2013, the trash can Mac Pro was up for sale on Apple's website by 2018 and 2019 as well. If someone has bought a Mac Pro 2013 in 2019, it has been obsoleted in 2022 after just three years of buying it. So that's a very big jump and it's the largest dumping a single macOS version has ever done on a Mac OS. So let's get over the sad part of macOS Ventura compatibility bomb and let's move to what we are going to get in this macOS version. Starting from the changes. So macOS Ventura has changed the system preferences like never before. It has been never done. The Mac OS had the system preferences same from last couple of decades and it has been totally changed. So that's a big bummer because the new UI looks very bad and I'm totally disappointed by that. So let's move to our system recording and see what changes we get in macOS Ventura starting from our system preferences. So let's discuss the changes we got on Ventura. First, it's the macOS 13 now. It sounds a lot awkward and different to just take the full integer as a macOS version instead of just saying 10.15. something that we were used to say. Coming to system preferences, it's no longer named as system preferences and no longer looks like system preferences and it's now called system settings and man it looks very bad and not at all user friendly for those who are habitual of a real nice looking so sorted system preferences it might look more friendly to a new user because of after all apple would have done a lot of r d on this and changed it what would be easier to learn but trust me it's hard to get it in at the start let's see the minor differences they made into different sections of system preferences and yes they have changed the positions of so many things as well first apple id comes on the top and wi-fi and bluetooth and network settings underneath it the way each section of the system preferences look is completely redefined and doesn't look like a mac at all it's somewhat uncanny experience for me because from the last 10 years i've been seeing the same system preferences with little to no changes over the generations of mac os versions but now they have changed it totally. You can see over the left we have our old system preferences and over the right we have our new section of general in system settings. The new journal is not at all what old journal used to be like. There is not a single thing from old journal to new journal and trust me this is a huge kick to the muscle memory of millions of people. Then I noticed there is no direct grouping between any section of the sidebar of the system settings but there is a gap between specific sections and I think that's their neat way to do grouping without grouping anything firmly. We have a new section named appearance which is technically the old general. Then we have our control center then desktop and dock which used to be dock and menu before. Then we have our old new lock screen which totally makes no sense because it has power saving options and user switching options and then we have our users and groups imagine what it has literally nothing it has a user name and then just an option to change profile picture and password how cool is that like they could have moved lock screen settings here and it would have made more sense or they could have moved this to a lock screen because you can change password from here the only good thing i like in new system preferences is that there's an option for passwords in it that's good because first it was hidden in Safari but they, they started to show this up in macOS Montre 12.14 and in this system preferences as well. So that's kind of a okay. So let's move to about this Mac and about this Mac got a new look as well. It's full of transparency and it's slimmer than ever with no details like there used to be. No display section, no details on storage or memory, just plain simplified spec sheet. 
And if you then click on the move info, you will move back to system preferences, which is now system settings. And then there you will be find exact same details that you were shown on about my Mac window, but with a special new feature, a button which says details and it gives you details of your coverage. Well, I should not be very harsh to Apple at this moment in time, because as we all know, it's just a beta too. We might get a lot more in final version, but the way they literally messed up the whole UI of the system preferences about this Mac and other minor stuff is very disappointing. Among the great things in Mac Cosmo 2 Raw are stage manager and continuity camera. I know there are other stuff like editing the iMessages, hands off in FaceTime calls and the magic you can do in Photos app but these features are already available on many other apps. What we are going to focus in this video are these two big things. So let's start with stage manager. So we have opened plenty of application over our MacBook. On the first you won't even notice that stage manager exists because it's nowhere on the screen how to enable it and you won't even know if Apple didn't tell you that stage manager is a feature in Mac OS Ventura if you don't open control center. So if you go to control center you will see this stage manager right next to the screen mirroring and you will click it and the magic appears to happen. Let's start from a point and imagine you just click stage manager and you had plenty of apps open and your focus was on Safari. You click with stage manager what to do if you had your safari in full window size once you have clicked the stage manager and we have our focus on safari now there are a couple of limitations first the window does not appear to have in a full screen mode and by full screen mode i does not mean the full screen mode but a fully expanded model of the screen or window of the screen and then we have our apps here so let's start with safari if you have multiple windows all of your windows will be in a box style and I wonder why they did not expand it here because let's take it that our stage manager windows are on the left so they try to give it a better look but you can still expand it and then you will see oh the magic is working and then you want to go to your different app you have to go left and you have to click to switch so it's toggling between the clicks but if you click them quick enough it will go to the third or the fourth window if you have them open and all of them will be in a box size there's also one another option in stage manager is to show recent apps and hide recent app if you click the hide recent app i think that's a better way to do the work because it will hide the recent app and they will only show up if you move your cursor to the most left side of the screen like it works if the dock is hidden okay then we have our our settings are on the top and all the area is technically wasted i wanted that it would at least give a maximum size or bigger size as settings windows as well because we are obviously in a stage manager and what is good if we can't get a full screen mode in stage manager we go to our applications folder so app store and again we face the same issue why not the full screen if it's already in a stage manager configuration but we can give apple a chance here because it's just a beta 2 version right now and it's not a complete version so that would be okay the big disappointment I got with Stage Manager is that a pro user cannot use it properly given the fact they have tried to ease the process of desktop user experience but that's not at all the case. If we go here or if we go to the documents, we have a couple of documents and files here and if I want to move this file to the desktop that's not possible and that's extremely unsatisfying or you can say disappointing that we cannot move a file from a folder to desktop when we are in the stage manager. That's because if you are in the stage manager, desktop is also another a window and it's not linked to the finder and I am totally disappointed that why would such a thing be made at the first place even if you want to copy a file you want and you won't even see the files on the desktop. All right, if you want to copy a file from the desktop to the finder, then there is a possibility you have to go here, you have to wait for it to double click and then you can drop the file here. But now you can't even drop it back and that's a big big disappointment as far as i know and to be honest mac os is mac os because of how creative and how easy to use the finder is on mac if you compare it to windows it's way better it's million years ahead of what windows have to offer and in stage manager finders capability are limited by the stage manager settings so let's move to the last part of the video the only really good part i liked about mac was Ventura's valley of creativity let's try it and see what results do we get out of it so we go to our QuickTime player, right click on the QuickTime icon, go to a new movie recording, now click the small arrow in the window and there it is. My iPhone 13 connected to the same Wi-Fi and having the same Apple ID and that's pretty simple. It shows up right there. 
all we got to do is click our iPhone and it's connected. Now you can see it work pretty responsive and clear. You can maximize the resolution to 1080p and it still works super smooth. While working with it, I noticed that you can use the USB link to connect the iPhone as well, which will reduce the latency greatly and will make it even more stable and smooth. So now it's time for our conclusion on macOS Ventura. macOS Ventura comes with great features but with few disappointments. Especially the change they are making in the user interference, I think they could have gone with a slower approach and a more neat and organized settings. They have used the older UI in a better way which was in the muscle memory of millions of people around the world. Then comes the stage manager. Stage manager is a very good attempt to revolutionize the very old hard learned desktop user experience but I think it's still in a very undeveloped stage that a pro user will have a very hard time learning and using it in a daily environment. Stage manager would be a very fun and initiative way to use a desktop user experience for those who are new on macOS but those who are using macOS from years it will be very hard to unlearn the basic features but I still wish them luck that they are trying to revolutionize the desktop user experience which has been learned by millions of people around the world and is in a very developed stage. Let's move to the other good features of macOS Winter app especially the faster safari, secure passwords, good new photo app and the editing option in iMessages. And my most favorite is Continuity Camera. So that was all about macOS Ventura from a Mac enthusiast. I hope you liked the video. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. And if you have any question, query, let me know in the comment section below. And I will try to help it out and give you more information. If you have any video recommendation, let us know that as well in the comment section below. We are also on Patreon and Instagram and other social media apps. You can follow us there as well. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. And until the very next video, please take care. Allah Hafiz.